Hey everyone, Steltron Live. So welcome back to our map making tutorial. And today we're gonna get started on the data editor. So in this first video, I'm just gonna give an overview of the data de editor and we're gonna set up our data editor workspace. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started, we want to go back to the main page of the map making tutorial and I'll have a link in that uh, below the video if you wanna check that out. And then just go to the trigger module. And what we're doing here, we just need to download the completed trigger, trigger module. Uh, you can use this, the one that we completed last time or just download this first, uh, first, first one. So the finished product map file. And then uh, just save that file in, to the same folder that we were working with before, your StarCraft 2 maps uh, in the StarCraft 2 maps folder. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, first page of the data module tutorial. Okay, so the objective of this, uh, the data module tutorial, is to get acquainted with the data module by editing existing data for units, abilities, effects, and weapons. So at the end of this module, we're going to have a modified uh, Jim Rayner unit. Uh, we're going to change his name, give him extra health, extra armor. He's going to have different abilities than he what he does currently, and he's going to have a modified weapon. So just a little introduction on the data module. So StarCraft II comes packed with hundreds of pre-made units, doodads, tile sets, and abilities. So if you want to create a map with an entirely new unit or uh, existing unit with a new ability, uh, you have to use the data editor for this. Uh, so let's say you want to create, have Dark Templar, Dark Templar that can use Blink, or battle cruisers that have no armor but have a lot of health. So again, you have to use the data editor to do this. So in fact, the data module lets us modify almost everything about StarCraft II. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover go over ways to modify existing data, including modifying unit health, armor. Starting energy, adding or remo removing existing abilities to units, and modifying weapon uh, firing rate, rate, rates and damage. Okay, so let's go ahead and open our map. So just open the finished map, uh, finished product, or just go ahead and uh, open up the, the last map that we stopped on. Uh, it should have all the triggers completed from our trigger tutorial. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and go to the data module, which is just click the button uh, with the Marine. Uh, you can also press F7 to do this. Okay, so you can see this is can be a little intimidating. It doesn't even have all the fields um, filled in, but I'll go over this really quickly. Um, so basically, if you click one of these, it's going to come up with a bunch of stuff. Uh, you're not going to know, if you're new to this, you're not going to know what any of this stuff is. And you, you might be intimidated, you might it might be off-putting, but we'll go step by step. And I'll, I'll show you guys what every everything is here. Uh, or just, I'll, I'll show you the basics of what these things are. Okay, so let's go back to the tutorial so we can look at this data tree. So we can think of data in the StarCraft, in StarCraft 2 like a tree. Each map in StarCraft 2 has at least one mod attached to it. And this contains all the information about the unit's abilities, weapons, uh, effects, user interface, etc., that can be used on the map. So the first uh, subset of the mod is uh, catalogs. So the trunk is broken down in different catalogs of data. Uh, you have units, abilities, weapons, they're all a separate catalog. So these catalogs work together to form the game data as a whole. The next uh, subset are objects. So each catalog contains objects, which are specified entries in that catalog. So in the units catalog, uh, marine is, a, is an object, as well as zealots and zerglings, and all other units. Okay, 
and then we have the fields. So each object contains a list of fields that are associated with it. So these are the types of information that define each unit. So for example, the marine object, you have its maximum life field and abilities field. Okay, so each, if we keep going down the tree, each field has one or more values. So for example, the field life maximum has a single value of 45, which is the maximum life of a marine. Uh, so some fields have multiple values, uh, like abilities. You have the marine can move, stop, hold position, attack, stem, um, as well as any more abilities that you want to give it. Okay, so let's go back to our data module, or data editor, and look at how all these, uh, the catalogs, objects, fields, values, show up here. Okay, so in this first section uh, window, these are gonna be your catalogs. This is your catalog. And then all these things, uh, if you click on them, these are all objects contained within this catalog. So once you click on a uh, one of these objects, you'll have your fields, and then to the right of that, you're gonna have your values. So that's just a little overview of the data editor. So now we're gonna look at setting up our workspace. So before we start working, we're gonna set up a couple of options like we did with the trigger module tutorial. So just keep in mind that all the options that we're gonna set are for the sole purpose of following along with the pictures in this tutorial. There's no right or wrong way to set it up, you edit it to your work. Uh, so just experiment with this and see what's, what works best for you. So it's basically pers personal preference. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the view raw data. So we're gonna leave this option off. Basically if it's off, um, you won't have that little blue background around it. If it's on, you will have this blue background around it. So the view data, we're gonna leave this off. So a little bit about this, every object has an ID that is referred to and then it has an associated text value with its name. So take the unit we're gonna modify, for example, Jim Rayner. So if we type in uh, Jim Rayner, uh, and click on it, uh, so his ID is just Rayner, but his name, his full name is Jim Rayner Commando. So if we click, if we turn this view data on, you're gonna see it just shows as Rainer. So if we leave it off, it'll show Jim Rainer uh, Commando. Okay. So the next is gonna be display object list as a tree. So we're gonna leave this off. Uh, if you show the object list, it organizes the list of objects into folders based on categories. So you can look through the object list like you do when looking through folders on your computer. So if we turn this on, it's just gonna create a folder tree structure. So that's just personal preference. Uh, we're gonna leave it off. The next is uh, display all object sources. So we're also gonna leave this option off. So as we modify data, we don't want, uh, we don't wanna modify the game data for the entire game. We just wanna modify the data for a particular map. So this new data is stored in the map we're making. If you turn this option on, it's gonna show us the original data as one entry and our new modified data as a different entry when we modify existing units. So if you have this set to off, uh, when we change our unit Jim Rayner, we're not gonna see two entries for the unit, just one. So this is just to simplify things. Um, so it's not gonna show the original plus the unit that you, uh, you edited or the object that you edited. Okay, show object, object explorer. We're gonna leave this on. So the explorer view is good for showing you what ob objects are connected to to other objects in the data. If we're viewing the Jim Rayner commando and we want to look at his weapon data really quick, we can find his weapon in the explorer section and select it to show its data rather 
then navigating to the weapons tab and finding his weapon in the list of weapons in the game. So basically having this on will show uh, the object explorer down here. And if you want to look, if you go down to weapons, uh, you can see Rainer Gauss rifle. If you click on that, it'll show all the uh, it'll show the fields and the values uh, for his Gauss rifle. If we have this off, you can see when we click Jim Rainer Commando, it's not going to have that Object Explorer down here, and it's going to show all the uh, available uh, values, uh, fields, and values. So this just makes it. A little e easier to work with if you want to change a specific uh, upgrade or weapon uh, just have the object explorer uh, setting turned on okay the next one's going to be table view uh, we're going to leave this option set to on so when it's turned on we're going to we see a table with a list of objects fields on the left and values on the right so double clicking on a field of value will bring up a new window with the controls to edit the value. Turning this option on automatically turns the default uh, detail view and XML view off. So if we have this set to off, uh, you can't, you have to change uh, the type of view, which I'll cover in the next one. But basically if you, if you click on one of these uh, set, set damage point, you can update it right there. So let's say instead of the table view, you want the detail view. Uh, for this, we're going to leave this off. When it's turned on, instead of seeing a table with a list of uh, fields and values, you're going to see all the controls for editing those values. So if you turn this on, it's going to show you all the options for edit editing those values. So we're going to leave it in table view. So XML view. So XML, for you guys that don't know, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. Uh, we're going to leave this to off. So when it's turned on, uh, you're going to see the text editor uh, with a view of the data, which is formatted in XML. So all the game data in StarCraft II is stored and read by the game in this format. The data's uh, module's main purpose is to make this data easier to read and to modify it for those unfamiliar with XML. Okay, so let's go ahead and back uh, to table view. So basically this XML is what is read into the StarCraft II game. Okay, so if you're following this tutorial, uh, just one thing, this tutorial is made after Wings of Liberty was released, and I'm currently using the editor uh, which was released with uh, Legacy of the Void. So it's been updated, so not all these settings are going to be the same, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through some of them. So the next setting is sort fields by source. So we, if we have this on, you'll see it's going to sort uh, the fields and values. So all these blue fields are unit specific values, and then all the kind of grayed out ones are uh, default values. So basically if we have this off, it's not going to organize them into the unit specific and default. So just leave that on. Uh, the next option is show basic field label. So you can see if we have that on, it'll show this basic label and we have it off. It won't show that basic label. Show field categories. So we, if we have this on, it'll show categories like editor. And if we turn it off, it's not going to show those editor categories. Okay, and the next one is combined structure values. We're going to leave this to on. Uh, so some object fields are related. So double clicking on any one of these related fields will bring up the same window with controls for all the related fields. So for example, uh, you see basic weapon options and it has a plus sign next to it. So basically if we double click this, it's going to kind of open up all the basic basic weapon um, options and then if we turn this off 
it'll default to showing all those basic weapon options uh, without having to double click. Uh, but we're going to leave it on just to keep it a little more organized. Uh, so less stuff is thrown at you uh, right from the start. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to cover is XML syntax highlight highlighting, uh, which is here. And the only way you're going to be able to notice a difference in, in the syntax highlighting if you have the XML view set. So you can see here all the XML is in black. It's in one color. And if we highlight it, it'll, it'll just highlight the syntax so it's a little easier to read, um, a little easier to follow. So if you are using XML, just make sure you have this set to on just to make it a little uh, easier to read. But we're going to switch it back to table view. And that's, that's it for the first video. So the next video, we're going to actually make some changes in the data editor. Uh, this was just a overview of the data editor, uh, what the different windows are. So again, these are, uh, this is your object window. Uh, each one of these is a different, uh, sorry. So this is your catalog, catalog window. <laughs> See, I'm still learning. This is your catalog window. Each one of these is a different object. Here's your object explorer. Then you have the fields and then the values. So that's pretty much it. Um, so just remember your catalog contains all the abilities, units, weapons. Uh, your objects are, um, you know, your different units, the marine, the fields are things like uh, the name, race, and the values are the values for those uh, specific fields. Okay, so that'll, that'll be it for our the first part of the data editor tutorial. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Again, I hope this has been helpful. Please leave comments below, anything I, I can do to change, improve, improve these videos. And also just let me know if there's any tutorial you would like me to cover specifically. And besides that, hope you guys all have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.